Hello guys, welcome back to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today, I'm wearing my Tron shirt, and why would I be wearing my Tron shirt? Well, because today we're going to build this Tron control panel. It is using the Glenn's Retro Show Tron stick and spinner, and it's enclosed in this 3D printed open cake case with a brand new control panel. I'll put links down below for everything you see here, hey, including this new t-shirt. I love it. Anyway, let's put this together and then we're going to go play Tron. Let's get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and unbox the Tron Arcade Joystick from Glenn's Retro Show. These are high quality devices. Everything I've received from them has been fantastic. Here's the instruction manual. Take a quick glance here. Alright. So let's go ahead and take a look at the components here. This is the base for the Tron stick. There's a bunch of cables and an encoder board. And here's the Tron stick itself. It's got a really nice feel to it. Very solid. And of course, the Tron decal. <laughs> Sweet! If you go to wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash GRS, it'll take you to this page where you'll find all kinds of projects associated with the Glenn's Retro Show products, such as the Tron panel. And we'll just scroll on down here and click the link to download it from Thingiverse. And this is what the model looks like. Before we jump into setting up the Tron stick, I want to show you something real quick here. Kind of a bonus, I guess you might say. Here we're going to play Outrun with just the spinner, which is pretty cool in itself. But we can make it a little more fun by 3D printing the GRS steering wheel. So basically, you have a hole through the steering wheel that fits over the spinner. So you just set that right on the spinner. And we'll install an M5 screw, which will keep it nice and secure. Of course, this is freely available on the Wagner's Tech Talk GRS page. Cool! Look how it spins! <laughs> Alright, so let's try Outrun again using the new steering column. It makes it a little easier to play. I rerouted the USB cable that's going to the trackball and the spinner interface board so I can easily disconnect it or reconnect it whenever I want. So if I plug it in, I have the trackball and the spinner. This is the Tron control panel. And this side is where you mount the spinner. And this is the encoder board for the Tron stick. And over here, this is where the Tron stick itself fits. And all the holes are already pre-drilled for you. All you need is a base. So here's our base. I went ahead and printed one with side buttons and side access just so we can expand if we want to, such as using the expansion pack to add wrist supports. It's pretty cool. Gives it a nice appearance as well once it's fully assembled. So we'll go ahead and assemble the side panels. So we'll just take the M3 screw and nut, screw that in. Now I made a slight mistake over here. <laughs> Use a shorter screw. I wound up having to replace this one. <laughs> this is the 12-in-1 interface board. This is what's going to control the communications to the spinner. So what you want to do is just take this and screw it into the base right here just a little bit. 
and turn it diagonally and I'm installing M2 screws in here and it'll secure it nicely. Next we'll go ahead and plug in the micro USB connection into the interface board. Now we're going to set this out of the way. We're done with it for now. And this is the control panel. We're going to go ahead and install the spinner into the left hand side here. So I'm flipping it over and simply aligning the holes. If you're finding this video helpful and want to see more, please click subscribe. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this spinner here. I'm going to go ahead and tighten it down real good. That looks good. And we'll go ahead and put the top on. Slide it over the shaft there and then we'll rotate it around and use our Allen wrench to tighten the small screw that's inside of the spinner. Now we're going to put the encoder board for the Tron stick onto the back here. There's no holes to drill, no spacers needed. It's all just built into the control panel to make it as easy as possible. So we just screw those in and now we are going to install the base for the Tron controller. Alright, so we'll just put this little metal ring in here and put the top cover over it. I might not have installed that metal ring in right. That just doesn't seem right. I'll have to check with Glenn on that one. <laughs> Be sure to check out the video description for any updates. Before going public with this video, I talked to Glenn and made a slight redesign to the control panel. Everything else in the video is identical to what you're seeing here, but this is the new control panel. And you want to set the spin lock vertically here, up and down, and that way it'll lock into place perfectly. So instead of installing the plate on the top, like you see throughout this video, it actually goes on the bottom. Everything else you see in the video is absolutely correct, but I wanted to make sure this is clarified and I did update the model on Thingiverse, so there's no way you can download the wrong thing. <laughs> okay, so this is what it looks like fully assembled. It actually looks a lot better. Good! Okay, let's continue throughout the rest of the video. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and install these M5 screws and Align it and quickly tighten it down with this Allen wrench and then I'm going to go in with a pair of needle nose pliers and tighten it really good because we don't want this moving around on us. Now we're going to install the Tron joystick itself. So we're just going to feed these sets of wires through here and you want to twist the shaft here and then you can slide it through and we'll just check it out here yep everything feels good all right so on the back side you want to push this knob down and twist and that will lock it into place cool all right so now we're going to take this connector it's got two red wires on the far left and we're going to to attach that to the encoder board like so and then this large connector we'll plug in right here and then the blue and white wire matches the blue and white wire on the stick and the red and black wires That'll provide power for the LEDs. And we'll connect that up. There we go. And now I'm going to take all the rest of these connectors for all the buttons. If you wanted to hook up buttons, I'm not going to do that in this case. But if you wanted to, you certainly could. But I'm just going to tape them all up so they're not all over the place when I go to enclose this box. Now we're going to take the micro USB connector and plug it into the encoder for the Tron stick, like so. 
All right, so now we need to connect up the cable that goes from the 12-in-1 interface board to the spinner. So let's go ahead and do that. Plug the larger connector in here, and the smaller connector will go into the smaller connector on the spinner. And it's keyed, so you can't make a mistake here. <laughs> All right, cool. It was at this point I realized I have a bit of a dilemma. Do I want two cables coming out the back or one? And I chose one. <laughs> so I had this USB 2.0 hub that I wasn't using, so I went ahead and connected both USB connections there and then took the female connection and plugged it in and now I only had one cable going out so I took some velcro put it on the back stuck it to the base so instead of using up two USB connections we only use one all right so now we're gonna put everything back in the box and this is about where I realized that the uh, screw on the right hand side was just sticking out too much and I couldn't get it in and I was getting kind of irritated what's stopping it. So yeah, I undid it. And I just slid it down one. And that gave it plenty of clearance. I also could have gone with a shorter screw as well. Which would have probably worked just fine. Alright, so now what we need to do is feed this USB cable up and under the connector for the Tron controller. So we're just going to slide that in and I'm going to put a little bit of electrical tape here to make sure there's no stress. You could also use a cable tie if you want. And then we're just going to go ahead and put the screws through and the nuts like so. And of course there's four of them. We're just going to do the back side first. And the reason for that is because we want to put the wrist rest here. So we're going to go ahead and pop that in. And you have two screws on the very front from the top down that you want to put in. And then there's also screw holes on the side if you want to join the front rest with the left and the right. So you can do that if you want. I recommend using a hand driver for this because you don't want to put too much pressure between there. Now everything is assembled, but notice how it's sliding around a little bit. Since this box is a little light, we don't want it to slide around. So we're going to put on these rubber feet. This will provide more stability. Of course you could use suction cups if you want. Just check out the Wagner's Tech Talk page, forward slash GRS and download the suction cup holders. But this is great for me. <laughs> it's not sliding around as I'm playing, so I think we're ready. But before we can actually play, I'm going to go ahead and plug in this keyboard into the side port of the open cage. Again, you could use a PC if you wanted, running MAME, you know, whatever you want to use. So I'm going to go over here and select Tron. And when it launches, I'm going to select the emulator for ROM and set it to Advanced MAME 1.4. It just handles the spinner and a couple other functions a lot easier. So with that, I hit exit and I think we're ready to play. All right, the moment of truth. Let's plug everything up and see what happens. If everything goes well, when we plug this USB connector up, it should light up. Let's see. Yes, that looks good. If you check out the lower left, you can see the controls being played. And of course, in the middle, the game. Let's check it out. That was close. <laughs> This is so fun being able to play Tron with the open cade. Now I don't have to have a dedicated cabinet 
for Tron if I don't want to. I could just plug it into OpenCade and play it on a with a Raspberry Pi or with a PC running main. Lots of options. This is a level I'm not very good at. Let's see if I can make it. <laughs> That was close. All right, last one. The spiders. What's tough about this one is they start splitting and you get more and more. So if you don't act quickly, you'll get out. Just like I did. Try that one again. Of course, there's many levels to this game, and it keeps getting progressively more difficult. All right, let's see if I'm clear at this time. All right, looks like I got it. There we go. Up, up, and away. As you can tell from this video, you have a lot of options with OpenCade. You can set up the Glenn's Retro Show trackball and spinner. You can set up a joystick and buttons, and you can mix and match them. You can put one on the left, one on the right, however you want to create it. And with that, I'm going to let my friend Glenn close us on this video. Thank you very much for watching. Glenn, take it away, sir. And again, you'll be getting the Tron joystick, the Tron decal, the illuminated joystick, the uh, 360, eight-way and four-way direction lock, and the encoder board that controls not only a joystick, but I believe up to uh, 10 buttons, as well as the ability to illuminate and change the effects of the buttons and how they illuminate. So I want to thank you all for watching, and uh, I do hope you enjoy this if you do decide to pick one up. If you did like the video, please like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, and remember everyone, if you play good or you play bad, remember, game on.